If you listened to our episode on Monday, I just want to say thanks again and that the same info will be in the show notes of this episode. From Rixie, this is Debuff, and I'm your host, Steve Skeels. Today I'll be talking about the PlayStation 5 reveal and the first two IGN Summer of Gaming Expos. Finally, after over a year of little information and a bit of teasing by Sony, we got our first look at the PlayStation 5 and some of the games coming to it. First, I just want to say that I really enjoyed the presentation. It was very to the point with minimal commentary. They did have a few developers briefly speaking to their games, but other than that, it was full of trailers and gameplay. Overall, it's exactly what I wanted out of our first look at the console. I'll get to the games in a second, but since this is the first time we saw the hardware itself, I just want to say that I think it looks alright. It looks a bit like a router, and it might be a little bit larger than the PlayStation 4, though it's hard to tell from the pictures. I'm glad they're trying something a little bit different than the standard rectangular boxes, but I currently can't decide if I actually like it or not. One thing a bit worrying is that they only showed it standing up like a tower, so I'm a bit unsure if you can actually lie it down, which I really hope you can, otherwise everyone will need new setups for their entertainment centers. Now Microsoft is doing something similar with the Series X, so I'm wondering if this has to do with cooling the console, maybe providing more surface area for airflow, but either way, I think it'll be a bit disappointing. They did show two versions, one didn't have a disk drive, which I think is good for people nowadays that just go all digital, but it's almost funny how much it barely changed the look. Took off the bump that they had on the top to hold the disk drive, but it's a little bit silly, it's not a little bit smaller console. I'm hoping that this is at least $100 cheaper for those that do want to go all digital and don't care about buying physical games anymore. But now for the most important part, the games. Really, I don't know that any of these necessarily require next-gen hardware, but I do think it'll add something to these games. And in the end, I don't really know what we're expecting for next-gen besides improved textures and lighting and all that good stuff. So without playing the games, we'll end up seeing later on whether or not these push past our current-gen expectations. But regardless, damn am I excited for a lot of the games they showed. There's so many I'm dying to play, and there's too many that I'm really pumped for, so I'm not going to say a lot about each of them, so I suggest watching the whole presentation yourself if you haven't yet. Also, at the time of this recording, I don't really know how many are actually PlayStation 5 exclusives, so we'll find out as those announcements come out. Honestly, opening up with the Spider-Man sequel starring Miles Morales and closing with the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn was basically all I needed to be on board. Spider-Man and Horizon were some of my favorite games this gen, and I've definitely been dying for sequels to both of them, especially Horizon. But Sony didn't stop there. We got sequels to Ratchet and Clank and Oddworld, a platformer starring Sackboy from Little Big Planet, Hitman 3, Gran Turismo 7, Capcom finally continuing the Resident Evil series with Resident Evil Village, and a Demon Souls remake, which I'm unbelievably hyped for as I never had a PS3 to play it. Then there were some new IPs and indie games that got my attention. I'm just going to go through a few of them here. Godfall, the quote-unquote looter slasher action RPG from Gearbox, looks great, and I'm stoked that we got some combat for that. Can't wait to see more. Arcane Studios, the team behind Dishonored and the new Prey, showed off Deathloop, which looks like another game right up their alley, so I know I'll be picking that up. Ghostwire Tokyo looks like a really cool first-person action game with some interesting powers and combat. Kina Bridge of Spirits looks to be a good action-adventure game with some unique mechanics and possibly an intriguing story about restoring nature. Then there's a few that, while not much was shown, are really interesting, like Square Enix's Project Athea and Capcom's Pragmata. Can't wait to see more on both of those. The last game I want to mention, which is now one of my most anticipated games, is Solar Ash from Heart Machine. I love their first game, Hyper Light Drifter, and while they barely showed anything for Solar Ash, it already gives off the same vibes, and I'm hoping it plays in a similar vein, but with new mechanics transitioned into 3D. In the end, I'm just impressed with how many games they showed off, and I think they really had something for everyone. Multiple games that will fill all the big genres, and quite a few I wasn't expecting to see. I'll be waiting to see what games there will be at launch before I commit to being a day one owner. And of course, everyone's waiting to see what the price will be. But after this, I know I'll be picking up the PlayStation 5 at some point. (music) 
Second and last topic today is the IGN Expos. These are the most packed days of their Summer of Gaming event, and after watching the first two, I just wanted to get into it a bit. First, I want to say that I think they're pretty nice events. The presentation style is very IGN across the board, whether you like that or not. They had some banter between the hosts uh, before and after each game, reminders to subscribe to IGN, pre-shows, and all that good stuff. I do like how it feels a bit more like an event by fans, with just the connections to pull it together rather than some big company hosting these events like E3. You can tell these guys really love games and just wanted to put something together. They provide a bit of commentary that you wouldn't get from conferences like E3 since, as I said, those are mostly just big companies pulling this event together and showing off whatever they can. Just like they advertised, there was really only a few new game reveals so far, and it was otherwise full of trailers and gameplay for games we already know about. And because of that, I appreciated that they had interviews with developers when showing off many of these games. It was a nice touch. Instead of just showing off gameplay clips or a new trailer for each of the games, they had people in there actually given a perspective on it. I think my major complaint for it overall, though, is that the timing of it was a bit funky. Both were quite long and started off fairly early in the day. And on top of that, it was a little bit difficult to figure out when you really wanted to tune in because you didn't know when something would be shown off. I get why. Obviously, they want you to watch the whole thing. But if you didn't catch it in the first place, I'd probably just watch some highlights later. But either way, I think there were some good games shown off, so I wanted to give my personal favorites. And of the new game reveals, Metal Hellsinger and Demon Turf were probably my top two. Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm first-person shooter that, as IGN said, is like a love child of Doom and Guitar Hero. I think it looks like a really fun concept, and while I don't typically like rhythm games very much, I think this could be good fun if the controls feel tight. Then Demon Turf, on the other hand, looks like a pretty cool 3D platformer with a somewhat throwback art style with their retro-inspired sprites. Obviously not something that would have been made many years ago, but it looks like something you would have found in Doom. I really like platformers, and this one's being developed by the team behind Slime Sand, a fun and brutal 2D platformer in the vein of Meat Boy. So I trust them with this. But other than those two games, I was mostly interested in some new gameplay of a few of the games they showed. And probably the most exciting for me was Mortal Shell, a Souls-inspired action RPG that I've been waiting a while for new information on. There's a lot of Souls-inspired games, but I think this one definitely adds its own spin on the genre, with the shells basically being the different archetypes you can find to change your playstyle, complete with their own unique abilities and mechanics. The developers also said that, since they're a smaller studio, it will be a dense experience rather than a large one, and I think that is perfect for this style of game. And there are two other announcements that I think are pretty great news. Pathfinder Kingmaker coming to console, and Spellbreak now coming to Switch and Xbox One. If you've never played Pathfinder, uh, it's very much in the style of D&D, like Baldur's Gate or something like Divinity. I may not pick it up, but I'm really glad that more of these games are coming to console and broadening to a wider audience. Then we've got Spellbreak, which is probably the first battle royale I'm actually interested in, but only because I find magic a lot cooler than guns. I don't know that I'm going to be picking it up, but now that it's coming to Switch, I'm a little bit more interested. Honestly, there wasn't too much else that really caught my attention, but I'll mention a few that I recommend checking out. Of course, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time gameplay looks great. Check that out if you're a fan. Then we've got Rustler, a medieval version of the original GTA games that I think could be quite fun. Then of course, more Wasteland 3 footage, Borderlands 3 DLC, and the 13 remake, which I was a bit surprised about as I suddenly remember the original. Can't say I played it much, but I think this game looks pretty cool. Now, I will be watching the rest of their events, but I gotta say it definitely feels a bit bloated, and they even said as much during one of these expos. The new gameplay and reveals were good, but I do feel like it would have been better if it were condensed into one or two days, instead of the four expos they have planned. I'll be sure to cover more of the Summer of Gaming by IGN, so stay tuned. Debuff is hosted by me, Steve Skeels, edited and mixed by Mason Carlton. Follow us on Instagram at debuffpod. That's debuff, P-O-D. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one.